Hello North Plainfield and welcome. I wanted to give you a quick tutorial about how to use GoGuardian for those of you who are not familiar or have never used it before. So the first thing you need to do is go to goguardian.com. You can type it into your URL here, or you can click on it on the links page uh, under staff links. Once you're at this page, you go up here to where it says sign in. And we are going to be using our Google, our school and plainfield.org Google accounts for this. So click on login with Google. Our district has bought a, a license for this, so you can use your school accounts, which is already registered. Sign in using your school account, and you will log in. Now, I've already set up several classes, so you're going to see a bunch of my classes, but I'm going to show you how to set up a first class for the first time. I recommend doing it through Google Classroom if you're using Google Classroom, which most of us are now, uh, because it, it uh, populates all of your students in, and it gives you very little work to do. So once your classroom screen opens up, if you've used this before, then you may already have classrooms here. If not, you need to create your first classroom. To do so, you click on Add Classroom. Scroll down to where it says Add Google Classroom at the bottom. And from there, it will choose from your account all of your classrooms. I'm going to use the Test Classroom here because I already have all of my other classes on here. And it's enrolled my two students, okay, um, Megan and Neil. So I've now had this classroom. If I were to click on classroom here or even this classroom link up here, we will now see my new classroom here, test classroom. So we'll play around doing some stuff in here, and then I'll show you some of the features uh, using one of my other classes. Now, if I wanted to go into my classroom and operate it for the first time, I would click on the classroom, which I call test classroom. I can start a new session over here. It's gonna be a 45 minute period. Uh, we'll talk about scenes in a moment and I can start my session. Before I do that though, let's look at our other options. I can click on students to see who's in my session. If I have a student join my Google Classroom after I've created my GoGuardian group, I can sync students from Google and it will add those new students in. I can go to teachers to see what other teachers have access to see this. Here's where you can add or remove a co-teacher or if your supervisor wanted access. And then under settings. Settings is pretty cool. I can go in here now and I can change the subject of my classroom. This is going to be a technology class. Uh, scenes I'll talk about in a moment. I can give it a color just for fun. I can update the settings here. It's telling me up here that I have successfully updated it, so I am good to go. And what's a really unique feature, which works more for during a regular school day, is I can schedule when this class meets. So let's say this is a period one class. I'm working on high school time, so if this sounds weird to you, it's okay. Uh, our high school, our first class starts at 7.50 and it ends at 8.35. Technically at 7.53, but I'll round down. And let's say it meets Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. I can now add this schedule and I don't have to automatically be uh, attached to GoGuardian for it to be operating. So it will automatically open and close during these time periods. Be careful though, sometimes teachers will schedule a session, but perhaps we have an extended homeroom or there's a change in schedule for that day. It might cause some problems and it might overlap with other classes. So please be mindful when you're scheduling a session that it doesn't interrupt somebody else's uh, GoGuardian. Now, um, let's go back to the classroom for a moment because we wanted to start a session. Now, if I wanna start this session, I can say it'll be a 45 minute class, but there's our, uh, and, and I can just go in. If you've already scheduled it, then it will just start and stop without you needing to do this. But let's just say I start a schedule now. Now we're not gonna see anything here because these students aren't working on school issued Chromebooks. They're working on their own devices. So it doesn't really make sense. GoGuardian only works when it is a school managed Chromebook, but you will be able to see your students uh, doing their work and you'll be able to see their screens. Let's log into one of my other classrooms to see if any of my students are doing any work right now. I'm gonna start a session. I'm gonna turn off the scene. We'll talk about scenes in a moment. I just wanna be able to show you what the screen looks like. So if any of my students are currently logged onto their computer, their screen will pop up here. and I will be able to go in there and see exactly what they are doing. Another really interesting thing about this is I would be able to uh, go in, let's say this student is watching a film, I could go in there and I can turn off that film, I could close out whatever tab I needed to close out, which is a pretty cool function. 
I'm going to end this session as I don't want to be watching my students' screens right now. And after you end the session, you'll see a log of the events. So let me show you something else that's pretty cool about the log. If I were to go back to my classrooms and go into my honors world history, one of the things that you can do with your students when you're in a session is you can open up chat. You can enable chat and talk to them. I remember I used the chat function back on February 10th with my honors students. If I wanted to see what that chat log was or if my administrator wanted some uh, to see what I was doing, I could click on the session in, 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 uh, in question. I could click on this little chat icon down here and any conversations that I have with my students, I could click on it and see that conversation. So I have a record of my interactions with that student. I can also see here what exactly they were looking at. Now to get here, I clicked on my class that I was in. I looked at sessions and I went into a session where they were using it. So I picked Monday the 10th. So I went into a session here and I could see exactly what websites they were on while we were doing class. It looks like this student was on Google Docs. He was looking at things here. It looks like uh, this student was also on Google Docs doing some assignments. And it will show me what all of the students were doing as well as the, uh, the length of time that they were doing that. So uh, what's really unique about this program is it allows you to micromanage their um, classes, see what kinds of things that they are doing with their time. You can close out tabs. You can have a conversation with them. But then one of the really cool things is something in scenes that I want to show you. In scenes, you can create what we call a scene, which basically limits or only allows a specific amount of sites. Let's create a new scene together. Let's say that you want your students to be able to do much of the functionality of the internet, but you don't want them to be able to watch YouTube videos. You can name the scene whatever you want. You can change the pattern. It's not necessary. It's just for a bit of customization. And you have two options here, either allow mode where all websites will be allowed except the ones I'm about to block or block mode where every single website will be blocked except for the ones that I allow them to go on. If you want to try blocked mode, be careful because there are a lot of different ways that Google, let's say, accesses its files. So you may accidentally block something that you need them to go on to. I recommend using the allowed mode and just adding in a list of what of sites that you're going to block. So I'm going to block YouTube so that my students won't be able to use YouTube. Another really way, uh, another really interesting way that you can block sites is if you use the asterisk before or after the word. What I've done here is anywhere in a URL that has the word between the asterisk, so any URL that has the word YouTube in it will be blocked. So if my students have a workaround way of getting to YouTube, if I've done it this day, they won't be able to use it anyway. So I do this with a lot of websites. For example, the kids play a lot of .io games because those are free to use on the Chromebook. So I'll do asterisk, .io, asterisk. And any website that has .io in it, which is a lot of the games websites they used, is now blocked. Now, once I've done this, um, I can also set a tab management, meaning when I start the session with this scene, any uh, I can create a list of tabs that will automatically open at the start of my session. So if you know you always start your students off at Google Classroom, you can put the Google Classroom tab in, and it will automatically open them up here. If you want them to automatically start off looking at their mail, you can add that tab in also. If you know the URL by heart, you can type it in, or you can just copy the URL and paste it in if need be. You can also set a maximum amount of tabs. If you have students that have about 20 tabs up here or more, and you want them to start thinking about limiting tabs, you can set a limit to the amount of tabs that they're allowed to have open at any given time as well. Now, when they that does not automatically uh, delete their tabs. What will happen is that when you close your session, all of those hidden tabs will come back up. So you don't have to worry about uh, it, it deleting any of their work that they have open. When you are finished with this scene, you hit save a scene. And let's say I now want to apply the scene to my test classroom. I'm going to go into test classroom. I'm going to go over here to no scene applied. I'm going to add in my new scene that I just did. And right away, it's updated the scene. I can turn on my chat feature if I want to chat with my kids. Once I turn on chat, I can open up the chat box. I can click on the student and I can send them a message this way. And I can also get off task alerts, meaning if it seems like my subject is off task, then uh, meaning it's on my websites that are not related to my subject, then it will give me kind of alert notices like, by the way, it doesn't look like they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. When you are done with your session, if you are manually creating sessions and not using the schedule function, you click on end session. 
yes, I want to end this session. And right away, it will give me the results, what these students were doing uh, during these time periods. Now, you'll see there's nothing here. That's because these students were not using a school-managed Chromebook. You cannot use Google Guardian if they're on their phones or if they're on any other computer. This only really works for when they're on their school-given Chromebook device. But it's still a pretty good way of keeping track of what the students are doing at any given time. If you guys have any questions about Go Guardian or need more one-on-one -on -one help with it, please do not hesitate to reach out to the Google uh, to the techies, and we will do our best to help you. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and email us with any issues.